You special and she reckless And babe, you're my bestest friend Yeah, she my bestie My love for you is endless Nobody else can end it And when I get the money back Then baby girl Hey, what's up besties? Welcome back to another video. If this is your very first time seeing me, hi, hello. I am your girl, Elaine Michelle, and I am literally your new best friend. Look, I'm just a regular schmegler girl that decided to get her life together, and I brought you guys along for the journey. So if you're interested in budgeting, planning, DIYing, getting your life together, together, then make sure you guys join me on this channel. Click the subscribe button, as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss any more of my videos. You can you can also join the texting community which is me texting you and you can text me and tell me hey how you doing what you got going on and just share some things plus you get first dibs so make sure you join the texting community I have the number down below which is super easy just send me a text and say hey let me in all right so as you guys can see from the title of the video today we're going to be talking about my liposuction story so if you guys have been following me for a little bit over a year or so then you may have picked up on some things or you may not have um, I wasn't really sure how, when, or what I wanted to do as far as like presenting this to you guys, but I um, I wanted to share my story because I think it's really important. Like I'm just now to the point where like I feel comfortable with where my body is. Now I never had a problem saying I had surgery. Like that ain't that ain't never been the tea for me because I already knew once y'all saw like I went from this to that. Like y'all gonna be like, huh? So I was already prepared, you know, to talk about it. I just didn't know how I wanted to present it. So let's start from the beginning. How did I get to wanting to do surgery? Why did I pick surgery? Um, I actually, if you, like, again, if you've been following me, I've went on several weight loss journeys. Right before I had Bubba, I was like 145 pounds. Your girl was like flat, washboard abs, and everyone said I looked like a bobblehead. Because I did, because my head was still big, my boobs, like, I was giving Wendy Williams vibes. Like, just straight up and down, but I was skinny. I had got to, like, the skinny size that I wanted to be, but I still had no curves. So after I had Bubba... Y'all, he gave me a little blah blah boom back there in the back, okay? I had just a little. Now, I still had a high booty, okay? Let's, I ain't gonna play like I didn't, but it still, it looks a little bit better, like, as far as, like, my butt. So, it stuck out more, but I still didn't have, like, this hourglass shape. Um, so, I never really got back down to that size um, before I had Bubba. So, I still had, like, the loose skin and all of that, and I lost weight. I had got down to... Let's see, when I had Bubba, I was 192 pounds, I believe. And then when I got, when I was unpregnant, <laughs> I was down to like 185. And so when I started working out about a year later after I had got kind of in the swing of things, um, I got down to 175 and I felt great. I thought this was amazing. But of course, life happens. You get back into your swing of things and eating what you want to eat. And so I gained the weight back lost it again i got down to one i think it was like 179 or something like that um with the shed fitness that i did last year you guys can watch that video it was amazing but again life hits you and it's like boom that's the first thing that goes is like trying to go make time to go to the gym do all this stuff so i just it fell by the wayside um so during the um pandemic i had already been watching videos and was like you know what I think I want to get um, for my 30, whatever, what, when was this? I said before I turned 35, I wanted to get my body done. So um, I just made it a goal. I said, this is what I want to do. I started watching all these videos and I was torn between getting liposuction, tummy tuck, or BBL, okay? So there's differences between all of them. And you've probably seen a lot of girls go and get a BBL. Well. I honestly, the only reason I wanted the BBL was because of how snatched the waist look. I wasn't necessarily interested in having a big bottom because like I told y'all, my butt was like nice, okay? It was, she was sitting where she needed to be sitting. She was giving what she needed to give. You know, there was never any complaints about the bottom. But I was just not satisfied with my shape. And so I um, consulted with several doctors. I went to different consultations and I actually documented my process. I just never put the video out. So maybe I'll do that. Um, after this one um, if you guys are interested but anyway so I went and got several consultations everyone said that I should get um, a tummy tuck they were like well if you get the liposuction you still have loose skin down here like your skin isn't tight already so you're still going to 
you may get slimmer or like you know your body will be contoured but you'll still have some of the fat because you not fat but the skin I keep saying fat it's skin that would be there that's not tight and I was like oh okay which one do I want to do the tummy tuck the recovery time was about I believe it's six weeks six to eight weeks of recovery time which meant I would have been off work and all of that and so I was like I don't know I don't know about all that and there's these drains and all of this stuff and I said okay all right so they would cut your stomach you would get like they would take it out and refix it and then i saw all these horror stories about your belly button not being in the right place and having that scar i think it was more so the scar that really got me that would be along the line and i wasn't interested in getting the scar um so i just told myself okay so you don't want the bbl you don't really want the tummy tuck because of the lag time so i opted for liposuction so that was my other option but all the doctors were were very upfront with me about what my body would look like afterwards and I say that because I appreciated the honesty and not just letting me go in thinking I'm gonna come out with this snatched body like I'm gonna look like how I felt like it should look um, on there so they were very upfront I decided to go with new body concepts um, here in Memphis and the reason why because I did my pros and my cons so that's the second part like the cost and all that stuff the pros and cons so you go to Miami or you go overseas which hey you get, psh, listen they is snatching the girls up in miami and i love to see it but as someone who is focused on saving money making sure i make good frugal decisions i decided that i would see which one was more expensive so although the surgery was cheaper flying to going to Miami there were still more costs involved with going to Miami even going to Atlanta because I did Atlanta too um there was going to be a lot of costs involved with the travel the setup and all that so that's why I chose to do it here in Memphis so let me just kind of explain if you went out of town um you would have to pay for your surgery um one is getting that consultation so when you go down to out of like out of state or whatever then you get a consultation like kind of over the phone or video or whatever which is cool but they can't take like you have to get still go to the doctor get all your vitals get all your paperwork make sure everything is done before you get there but if something is off and you've already planned your trip you've already set up your surgery you're ready to go then now you're out of town and you're out of that money that you already spent to get there so anything could go wrong and i was like look i got them I got them chances that I would be the one like I would get there and my my blood pressure would be too high or my Billy Rubin would be out the roof I don't know it would have been me right so I looked at that plus the cost of staying in a hotel you would need to be there wherever you're at for at least a week so either a recovery house um which on average it's averaging about 150 to anywhere up 200 dollars um per night that you're there and with the recovery house i mean it's amazing they have somebody that take you there they do all these things but again it was a cost okay so plus flying to miami from memphis is not cheap because it's not like um they have some one ways but not all of them and i told you guys before like flying out of memphis is like flying out of nowhere because if you ain't going to Dallas or Cali, you might as well give it or Chicago, Dallas, Cali or Chicago, because we have a lot of corporate places here. But the it, it, it just ain't it ain't giving what it's supposed to be given at our airport. So um, that was going to be a cost. So when I added all of that up, plus going to the doctor, getting the um, the liposuction or BBL, it would have been similar to that because I was going to get the fat. I'm going to get lipo 360. So I was going to get the fat sucked from my upper and lower abdomen and then as well as going around to my back area. And that was going to be what I got. Okay. So that all together, my total was going to be roughly about, uh, it was 10,000. It was roughly almost $11,000 with everything all put in there together, okay? Again, I would have been super snatched, but with the time off work, getting all this stuff done down there, complications, you see your doctor down there, you have to still come back and see a doctor here. You have your massages you have to pay for down there. Like, I was like, okay, let me see how much it is here. So, um, I had two doctors I was considering. There's um, Plastic Surgeons of Memphis and then New Body Concepts. And I looked them up. I was board certified surgeon. I went, I met with him. I liked his conversation. He was older. Um, so, he kind of had two things going for him like he was older but he had seen a lot and he had done a lot of procedures and so he kind of gave me a better idea 
Um, and so I went with them because they did the uh, suction assisted liposuction and they said I would literally be able to like go back to work in three days. I was like boom so um i decided that i was going to get the consultation and when i didn't do anything until i had got my new job because i got laid off y'all know that and so when i got my new job i told myself that i'm gonna go ahead and do it so i did um i signed up with them and i got um what what all did i get so i got the liposuction <laughs> I got liposuction and I, on my upper and lower abdomen and then I also got the body tight and the Morpheus so what those are supposed to do is help me with my skin that was going to be loose and I can tell you I'm pretty sure it it, it did what it was supposed to do okay um, so that all together with everything was $7,700 um, I did pay for half of it out of pocket and the other half I did on um, care credit because I qualified for care credit with no interest for up to a year so I was like okay this makes sense I can do this I don't have to spend all my little coinage right off the bat I can go ahead and do this that way if I don't like it I don't feel bad that I gave my money you know I don't know about y'all but that's how I feel so that's how I quote unquote financed it um and I was like okay let's get it let's go one of the other things to consider is the massages afterwards now some doctors do not tell you to go and get massages but listen honey you gonna need the massages okay the massages are everything like they I listen okay so once I got the surgery, I had it done on October 22nd. Um, they gave you medicine to go pick up before. It is a wake. It's a wake procedure. So I was awake the whole time. I just didn't feel any pain. They numbed all the areas. And fun fact, I actually had to go pee while I was on the table. <laughs> like, I was like, listen, I got to pee. And I know I didn't drink a whole lot of water before. Like I just took enough to take the medicine, get it down. And I peed before I went in there. So whatever it was, it was pressing down. And baby girl bladder was like, eh, eh, not going to happen. So I told him I, I didn't want to pee on the table, but I could feel that coming down. So I was like, hey. I have to pee. They was like, are you sure? I'm like, yes. I'm 33 years old. I know how. I know how it feels to pee. Okay. <laughs> so, um, we got up. They walked me to the bathroom, you know, sterilized everything, came back, sterilized the table, all of that, and got back on the table and boom i was back at it again he was numbing it again and going in so i think my surgery was probably about um three two and a half three hours with everything all combined and then um my home girl uh tay thank you tay my best friend not my home just my best friend tay came and picked me up my niece dropped me off she had to go to school and then tay came and picked me up brought me to the house and then uh t came back to the house and stayed with me the next three days so i knew i was gonna need somebody so she was you know staying with me for that um pain wise i was like i was good i was laying there chilling like okay this is ow that hurts a little bit when he was poking me but i didn't feel anything from the actual lipo um the morpheus i kind of felt the little little pricks because it's like a whole little thing it goes like this into your skin and i don't know but i i didn't really feel any pain that day so i did take the medicine because i heard like after everything wears off you're gonna be in pain and uh listen i know i woke my niece up like i need something i don't know what it is but i need something my stomach was so swollen it was so slow. I was like, oh my gosh. And I was, listen, I was like, I don't know what I done did, but I don't want to do this. So that whole next day, I was just taking Tylenol. I didn't get any like, um, I didn't, I didn't want any like super duper pain meds, but I did, but I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't want to get hooked on them, not necessarily hooked on them, but I didn't want to get dependent upon those pills. So I did extra strength Tylenol, like they suggested. And I just kept going round the clock, round the clock. So that was a Thursday when I got surgery done. And Friday, I woke up feeling like crap. Saturday, I felt like crap. Sunday, I was like, okay, I might can do this. My niece left and went back to school. And I, um, I was like, okay, cool. Um, I can manage this. I got up. I made me some, some breakfast. I made some dinner, whatever. And I thought I was good to go back to work. Again, I was starting a new job. So I had only been there for like maybe a week. I hadn't even like got to my, like I was at my desk, but I hadn't even got to my desk yet. So anyways, I went to work on that Monday. Y'all, when I tell y'all, I left to work in tears. I called my massage therapist. Like, I was like, hey, do you know anybody that can give me, um, whatchamacallit, that can do the 
uh, lymphatic massages. That's what you're looking for is a lymphatic massage. He was like, I don't, but my homegirl Angel does. I was like, okay. So I called Angel. I'm literally in tears. I'm like, I know you're probably booked up, but whatever you can do, I need something. So she was like, I can get you in uh, tomorrow. Can you come tomorrow? So I went on that Tuesday, y'all. The relief that I felt was absolutely amazing. Like, I... I whoo, that massage was everything, but it got all those fluids and all that stuff out of there. And I'm happy I went when I did because I ended up developing um, some fibroids, like fibrosis. And that was where it was like making these lumps and had I not come, like it was just okay a whole thing so that whole first little month and a half i was like all right cool i i ain't looking no different i didn't feel like i, I knew something was happening but it was like mm, this ain't working the shapewear that they gave me was more so like compression garment it wasn't a faja right out of the thing and them things was a hundred dollars i was like wait a minute this ain't giving what it's supposed to be given i'm supposed to be snatched so that was one of the things i wish i would have did was had a faja like right off the bat so i ended up going through about three or four fajas before i found the one that i wanted to have and i ended up buying three of them to um like rotate out because if you guys know i, I had the full body one so it took care of the boobs it had the waist snatched and it lifted the booty so i was like for me i was like training my body to get where it was going but again i was a month into it before i even got the right faja so i feel like that was another thing i wish i would have done from the beginning is having the right faja which being in memphis versus being in miami you're just trying to figure out where you can get one from you're going with whatever your doctor gives you which my my first one was included my second one i had to buy which is a hundred dollars so i'm like that little waistband thing they gave me did nothing for me that thing was rolling over and again i still felt like i wasn't like looking as snatched as i wanted to look um but after i got the faja and i got used to wearing that that was pretty tight i had the stage one faja then i went down to a stage two faja and i honestly still to this day to this day i still wear my faja it's comfortable for me i like wearing it it snatches my body up it looks good um I, I, it gives what I'm supposed to be giving. Most women we wear under we wear you know undergarments anywhere we would anyway we wear shapewear anyway. So I really was like, okay, this is fine. It's just a part of my you know what I'm wearing. So I figured I found some different styles, some with shorts, some with the just the the tank top, just so that I could have what I wanted to have. And y'all, it's it's starting to come together. So I told you guys all about this story. I started seeing like some progress but i still was getting massages all up until i want to say june so from october all the way to june i was still getting my lymphatic massages so i went for lymphatic massages i was going three times a week then we brought it down to going twice a week and then we took that and i started going once a week so as i started to progress with things then we took it down them packages y'all for massages alone was nine hundred dollars nine hundred dollars nine hundred dollars okay so i hope y'all adding all this stuff up okay so you got your fajas that are running at least for a good one 129 dollars for a good faja and then you're gonna want to have extra ones because you have to let those things air dry um so i when i'm wearing one i'll have the other one you know ready to go and then cleaning out when i have the other one so you switching out of them all the time right okay so that's a whole another cost that you have in your lymphatic massages your faja your actual surgery and then all the supplies and stuff you have to get on top of that um so things that i bought was like i bought the uh doggy pads for like the bed because i just thought i was gonna be bleeding like out this world i didn't know so i bought those and lined my bed um i bought pads like the super long pads because i didn't know about my incisions to put those in there i bought foams and all of these things that i thought i needed to have now i will tell you if you don't do nothing else get the arnica um peels those tablets kept me from swelling bruising all of that stuff my doctor was actually surprised when i went back in he was like you don't have any bruising i had no bruising whatsoever because of those arnica peels so um i highly 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 recommend the arnica peels and then the hemp gel i have both of those linked down below for my amazon store actually i have a whole like liposuction uh like station on my amazon store so you guys can go pick out the things if you're interested in getting it um 
but yeah like that the hemp gel was like a pain reliever um cbd gel oh my gosh that was another lifesaver so definitely use that so overall my process was like i it, it was a struggle at the beginning as time went on i started to see some results but i didn't really see like a big big huge change and one of the things my doctor told me was it's gonna take at least a year you're gonna get you go it, it needs about a year for your body to actually heal from this i'm like don't nobody tell you that they you get off the table you just think you gonna be healed and you gonna be snatched and baby you don't be snatched okay you be looking decent but not snatched unless your body just like you already had a small you know small frame or whatever and you got tight skin like yeah you might get off snatched but baby <laughs> no 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 it was not for me and i was disappointed but not really things started to fit differently which was a big plus for me um i again i was still wearing my faja so like i feel like i had a false sense of what my body was looking like because of that and i was not happy to like not be in my faja like i just i didn't like not being in it because it didn't give me the shape like i feel like i didn't have a shape it wasn't Oh, let me show y'all my stomach is looking like so you can see i have a figure i have a you know nice little figure but when you see my actual stomach y'all gonna be like oh yeah you should have got a tummy tuck and so here is what my stomach looks like now let me show y'all from the side i still got back rolls i still got fat but i am a lot smaller like so when i wear stuff like this you can't even tell like she's looking good she's looking you know snatched up got my waist together and of course the butts <laughs> all right so you can see that like i ain't snatched i'm not snatched i'm not snatched at all <laughs> but am i smaller i am uh i'm now in a size 10 i wear medium size shirts with ease like this is a medium shirt here and i still have the room left so I can't say I'm not satisfied and it just got to this point where I felt like some days I don't have to wear my faja I can wear clothes without it and I still have that shape I'm still given what it's supposed to be given um but overall that was one of the things I had to accept so I made the choice to get liposuction and the Morpheus and the body tight other than knowing <laughs> knowing that I was not going to get that super tight look so my doctor does want to go back in um we talked about this uh at my thing so we're gonna go back in here and we're gonna grab this and we're gonna do the just the lipo in this area like right there um so he wants to do that which will take care of that little area which will make it a, a little bit flatter but realistically i'm okay with it do i want it to be a little bit more snatched maybe i'll go back and get a tummy tuck and get that completely flat but I'm also like, I think I'm giving like mom vibes and I have the curvature that I wanted because whenever I put on something, it looks like I, I feel like a woman. Okay. And before I wasn't feeling like a woman at all. I mean, I was, but I didn't feel like I had like the curves and all of that. Some things just didn't, it wasn't fitting the way I wanted it to fit. And I feel like it does fit now. So overall, <laughs> I just walked y'all down a whole, you know, little thing, but I would say if you get nothing else out of this video, um, just knowing that surgery is a personal decision. It's not based on somebody else because I was in all these surgery groups on Facebook, which are really awesome. And especially like if you're close to Miami or you're going to Columbia, they have like doctors have their own groups of what they call dolls. And you can go on there and like talk to other people who've had this experience but i didn't i didn't have that same um i didn't have that same sentiment here in memphis because there was like nobody really talks about it when you're like here they don't talk about getting your body done you'll meet people you like i know you got your body done but they won't tell you that they did um or where they go you know stuff like that it's really taboo still here so i wasn't able to get a whole lot of like support locally so it's just really doing my own research so i would just research and don't look at other people's bodies like look at yours understand what your body looks like what your goal is and all of that 
The last thing I want to say is that this is not a weight loss surgery. And I hope I made that very clear. Like, I was 212 pounds when I went for my, um, like, I went in to, like, give all my stats or whatever, get redone. Because I had got my consultation, like, back in, uh, before the pandemic, I believe it was, like, March or something. So I got my consultation in and then um, I need, you know, I need to get remeasured and all that stuff. So when I went back in, that's when we like made the decision for all the things that um, I was going to get done. And that's when I was like, OK, my BMI is fine, but my overall weight, like I don't I'm 212. So I got down to 201 before surgery. And then after surgery, I was 199. <laughs> I was 199 they took a total of 2.3 liters out of my body so you'll see the difference I'll have my you like you've probably seen my before and after pics like you can see the difference for sure but just looking like how I'm looking right now you'd be like girl did you really get something done no like it it shrunk me this way definitely shrunk me this way but it didn't do anything as far as like your weight so it's not a weight loss surgery it's not something if you're trying to like lose a bunch of weight that's not it it's body contouring this is what it did to contour my shape to give me a shape give me something to work with then after that like i think if i would have ate better i probably would have been a lot further along than what i am now um I'm now 182, 179. It fluctuates day by day. So I'm right there. But I also, um, you know, I walk a lot at work. I try to eat better. Um, I try not to eat a whole lot. <laughs> and I've just been watching what I eat and stuff like that. So with that, and I haven't been even on my Peloton with like I need to be. But I probably would be a lot smaller in weight if I did that. But, I mean... People ask me for a while, like, so did you get your butt done? I'm like, nope. But once you shrink that midsection, then it goes like this. So, of course, this part down here is going to go out. So, it looked like I did, but I ain't did it. <laughs> All right. So, overall, I would say, again, just make it a personal choice for you. Don't go off of what anybody else has done because their body will be totally different. My body is different. All of that stuff, everything, everybody is different. So, just make the decision on your own. And, again, remember, it's not a weight loss surgery. It's body contouring. So, you have these realistic you know perceptions in your head talk to your doctor tell them what you want tell them how you want to look give them an example of what you're striving to be so they can have a realistic like if you go in there with a picture and the doctor immediately says yeah i can do that you know be a little cautious because you know your body is different especially if you're just doing lipo because lipo for me is like up in the air like you may you may not it may do something it may not do something because you're literally just sucking the fat from right there in that area um with the bbl you're sucking the fat you're putting it somewhere else you're doing all these different things your your sleep all these different things but <laughs> they're um in Colombia, they're able to take out more um uh fat cells than what we can do here so kind of up in the air all right so i've told you guys like my whole little story my spiel and all that stuff and why i chose here you've gotten the whole rundown um i've explained some of the costs and things like that um now i want to talk just a little bit about like the mental impacts it has on your life okay because you assume that you're gonna look a certain way like when you get off the table first of all before you go on the table i would highly suggest that you make sure that your mental is there because there are going to be really really tough days there are going to be days when you're like why did i do this to myself like i should have never did this i don't see the results like i look crazy i don't want to feel like this i have these pains that sporadically come like lipo pain is for real and i still feel it there's times in my stomach like i just will get like a little surge of a of a pain there or if something touches it you know like hit the bumps against it it hurts still um so there there are some things that you need to be mentally prepared prepare for before and after again understanding that it is not a weight loss surgery so you're not going to come out and get on the scale and think you finna be you know boom bada boom boom i've seen people go and get a bbl and they look smaller than me and they on the scale hitting 220 so it's 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 <laughs> it's your body it's your structure your your mass all of that stuff so just know that you need to be in a good mental space and have some good people around you 
when you get off of the table because that's what's going to be important your support system i had my best friend was here and also my niece and i'm so thankful for them too because t and tay like teamed up they were tag teaming making sure i had everything i needed checking in they made the process so 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 easy and so comfortable for me as something that i wanted to do but they made it you know very very comfortable and so having that support system is important and then being able to talk to your doctor like you need to tell them how you're feeling what's going on with your body if you feel like something isn't right talk to them talk to the nurse that's there like i had conversations with my nurse assistant like the whole time but like she was the one who assisted with the surgery and all that like she pretty much did everything but lipo like she was my go-to person and i built that rapport with her so like she would call me and ask me how I'm doing like just to check in and stuff and that is so 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 important so the mental piece of it not looking how you want to look you like I just want to eat this food but you really shouldn't be eating the food you have got to be strong to to go through this because again you it's a year it's it's a year process and I think even with some of the other surgeries I've seen people say like they still like six months in a year in they're they're just now getting to where they want to be at with their body so just definitely keep that in mind go into it with an open mind for yourself and just being able to understand that it takes time it is a process wrong when building a night and neither was your body okay okay so yeah i gave you guys all the details i feel like of my story and again i would just things i would just remember i'm going to stress them as much as i can it's not a weight loss surgery everybody's body is different and make sure you're prepared when you get out of surgery to know that it takes time it is a process and that process can take a while for you to get in there so just when you're weighing out your pros and cons of going and doing the traveling and all this stuff like think about all of that having a doctor on deck that's going to know what you're talking about that when you go see them if something goes wrong you know you want to have all of that stuff kind of already planned out in your head not saying that you want anything to happen but liposuction is the least risky bbls are super duper risky um there are a lot of stories behind it of why um i didn't even realize how risky it was but one wrong move uh it, it, the vein back there in your buttocks if they hit the wrong spot can lead to some really severe 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 um issues um some leading up to death so not to scare you but just to give you a realistic perception that you need to really research and understand is this what you want um i've seen people get lipo 360 and get the results that they wanted to have again i already had you know a bottom i had maybe a little hip but they, they didn't stick out and now i have that so i'm good to go I probably bored y'all to death <laughs> with this video. I will try to put together like a little vloggy vlog type style so you can see like my process of my liposuction, like the day that I went, when I went to the consultations, all that stuff. I have all that documented. You can see like the day afterwards, what my stomach was looking like, getting my first massages. I have all of that stuff. I just didn't know how to uh present it or how i wanted to present it so i decided to go with this video just kind of explaining what i had done and then i'll show you guys a lot more um you guys saw the pictures in the video clearly but um i do have some video footage that i can share as well i think i hit everything i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and let me know what you guys think down below if you have had surgery what were some of the things that you know uh you wish somebody would have told you before you had surgery or just sharing you know some of the good things that happened i am all about the good the bad and the ugly because i think it's important to give people a realistic understanding of what they're about to get into because for me it made it easier for me to make the decision for myself and not based on someone else thank you guys for watching i will catch you guys in my next video okay okay bye you special and she reckless and babe you're my bestest friend yeah she my bestie my love for you is endless nobody else can end it and when i get the money back then baby girl you can spend it oh. And everything is alright I like how 